The Surface Pro 8 is once again available with mobile broadband, also known as LTE, 4G, or cellular, depending on where you're from. If you have a Surface LTE model, you can get online with a SIM card or an eSIM for internet connectivity. It doesn't allow you to make calls or send SMS messages, but it will allow you to stay connected, and the onboard modem also brings with it a good GPS capability. So what Surface Pros have LTE, and how do you go about getting online with one? In the Surface Pro 8 commercial range, you can find a number of the i5 and i7 processor configurations with LTE. I personally have a Surface Pro 8 i7 with 16 gig of RAM and 256 gig SSD. It's got LTE on board. You can only get the platinum version, not the black one. At least that's how it is here in Australia. And at retailers like Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi here in Australia, Best Buy in the US and other retailers, you can get an i5 Surface Pro 8 that includes LTE. There are several other models of Surface with LTE. For example, the Surface Pro 2017, the Surface Pro 7 Plus, they're available with LTE. The Surface Pro X has it too. And there are even versions of the smaller Surface Go 1, 2 and 3 that can be optioned with LTE. In this video, we'll focus on the Surface Pro 8, but the setup is similar on those other models. If you have an LTE device, it'll show up in your Windows 11 configuration panel or action center like this. It might say connect with an eSIM there, or it'll show the name of the phone carrier whose SIM card you've already inserted. Now, if you have a physical SIM card that you wanna use, we'll show you how to put it in. And if you don't have one, we'll show you how to use the electronic SIM or eSIM in this video too. So let's take a look at where you put the SIM card in. On the back of the Pro 8, behind the kickstand, you'll find a hatch that houses the SSD. Use a SIM card removal tool, insert it here to pop it open. A small paper clip might do the trick if you don't have a SIM tool. You'll see a slot where you can insert a nano SIM. So make sure that you line it up with the shape of the SIM card and pop it in. Push it all the way in until it clicks. There's a spring in there, so to get it back out, just press it in and release it. Once you have the SIM in, log into Windows, open up the Action Center, click on the Wi-Fi sound or battery icon to get there, and you'll see the carrier name is showing in the cellular connection menu. If you don't see this cellular connection option, then you either don't have an LTE Surface Pro or something's wrong with your setup. Now, depending on your provider, you may need to do something to activate your account. And once you've done that, you'll be online. From there, it's pretty simple. If you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, Windows will automatically switch over to the cellular network. If you wanna use the eSIM and you don't yet have a plan, you can run the mobile plans app to find one. You can also run that app from the cellular icon in the Windows 11 Action Center. The app will show you the eSIM providers who support Windows LTE devices like the Surface Pro 8. In my case, Telstra has an eSIM plan that'll suit my needs, and I can arrange that through the app. You could also grab an eSIM plan and an activation code from another provider directly, and you could use that too. Although in my experience, they'll have no clue how to support you if you need help. So this option is really reserved for people who know what they're doing. Once you have an activation code, go to the settings app, under network and internet, cellular. In this settings page, you can turn the LTE or 4G modem on or off, and you can choose between the physical SIM card, SIM1, or the eSIM, SIM2. Now that I have an eSIM code from Telstra, I can install it by going to eSIM profiles and adding my eSIM profile. This will prompt me to enter the activation code or to scan the barcode that I've received from my provider. Once again, now that I'm all set up with the eSIM, getting connected is easy. Whenever I don't have a Wi-Fi connection, my LTE connection will take over. Remember that an LTE connection is always treated as a metered connection, meaning that because this type of connection is usually more expensive, Windows will automatically limit data usage. It won't download Windows updates over this connection, for example, and apps that require downloads might be restricted to save data. And lastly, the Surface Mobile Broadband module in the Surface Pro 8 and other models is most likely made by a company called Quectel. It's hard to know exactly what the module is, but it is a high-speed LTE Advanced module, and going by their product pages, it's likely to be something like this one, which means that it supports multiple global positioning systems such as GPS, GLONASS, and more. These positioning systems usually work even without a SIM card. Like most modern embedded GPS systems, it communicates NMEA GPS data with the Windows location services. So if you're using some kind of mapping or location tracking application, you'll be able to get up-to-date and reasonably accurate location data from the GPS, provided your app supports Windows location services. If you have an older app that doesn't support location services, in other words, an app that's looking for an old school serial port for GPS data, there may be a way to use a third-party app to get this data across to a virtual COM port. If you've done this and you have a way, then let us know in the comments below. So that's how to get online with mobile broadband, 4G or LTE on your Surface Pro 8. 
If you're in Australia and you need a Surface Pro with LTE for your organization, get in touch with us at ASI Solutions using the links below. And if you're looking for something personally or you're based in another country, we'll leave some links below to other sources. Do you use an LTE Surface model? Tell us what you do with it and ask any questions in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.